and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the third part of this three-part series on should you buy an electric vehicle so to kind of recap we talked about in part one we talked about purchasing the car <clears throat> and all the stuff that comes with purchasing from test driving all the way to charging and uh, purchasing and what to ask, what not to ask. Uh, second part was about prepping your house or if you live in an apartment or condo, seeing if there's any charging availability on site or finding the closest charger itself. And then the third one is more about just, or this third part is about living with your EV and what's it like on a daily basis. Um, again, I've own, been owning uh, or have owned a an electric vehicle for the past, uh, well, since 2013. So it's been quite a while. Um, and um, I absolutely love it, would never go back, at least for me. Um, so let's get started. Uh, let's talk about what's it like to live with your EV. All right, welcome back. Um, so what is it like to live with your EV on a daily basis? Again, I've owned an EV since 2013 from Tesla's, Ford's, the Mach-E, um, Audi e-tron, and now the GV or Genesis GV60. And so what's it like to live on a daily basis? So let's talk about um, the number one, um, I, I think number one on my list to make sure that you've got right is the charging aspect. You know, um, last last uh, video we talked about installing a charger and going through that and the cost and all that <clears throat> at your house uh, so how do you charge when do you charge how does it all work um, all right so when do you charge for me I charge of course I think anybody that is driving an EV on a daily basis just charge at night while you're sleeping and and, and go from there um, stay uh, Alabama power um, has a discounted rate from 9, 8, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. And so I set my charger, not in the car itself, but the charger, the Electrify America charger that I have, I set it to char start charging at 9 o'clock in the evening and then charge till it gets to the percentage that I, um, I want it to be at getting ready for the next day to drive the car. Um, so check with your local utility company, see if they have any discounted rates and what time, um, and then go from there. Uh, so second one, second part of this, how, um, what percentage should you charge your cars? Um, there's various different ways of thinking, ways of doing it, um, what the manufacturer suggests, which I think is what we should listen to because they're the ones that has developed, you know, built the car, developed the battery management system, and they know the best way to maintain their batteries. So for um, for me on the Genesis, uh, I charge to 80% and pretty much all EV companies or manufacturers will probably suggest 80 to 90%. So I go to 80%, that's really to preserve the battery for longevity. Um, so I don't charge fully charge every day. So set it to 80% 9 p.m. at night it charges and then it's ready to go the next morning um, Don't freak out if you forget to charge overnight um, Just try to maybe make, put a reminder in your um, phone or or, or schedule it um, somehow just to remind you to make sure you have it plugged up because once you start driving an electric vehicle you're not used to doing that so um, you have no habit formed for that so you're gonna have to set some kind of reminder possibly or just as soon as you get home from a day's work plug it in so to go back 80% is where I charge the GV 60 now when I had my Audi e-tron I, I could charge up to 100% because Audi has a buffer built into their battery. So charging really at 100% might really look at 90% to the battery or something like that. Um, so Audi was okay with charging to 100% 
Um, I don't know if that's changed. I would definitely read up on it to make sure. My Teslas that I owned, um, I was at 90%, 80 to 90% is what I charged it at. Um, that was her recommendation from Tesla. The uh, Mach-E, 80% is where I charged it and, and went from there. Again, that was Ford's recommendation. So 80 to 90%, you should be perfectly fine and that should help with longevity of your battery. All right, what's next? Um, let's talk about traveling. Um, you know, you. I hope that you take your cars, your electric car on a trip. It is great, it is fun to kind of map out where you're going and stop at, um, you know, charging stations along the way to, to, to juice up and to meet other EV owners and get their perspective of an EV. Um, so I think that, you know, definitely take your electric vehicle on a trip and don't be afraid. Just plan it out a little bit ahead of time and you'll be fine. If you're a Tesla owner, you understand how that works. Literally key in where you're going and it'll it'll carry you there and tell you where to stop and how long to charge. Cars like the Genesis, Mercedes, BMWs and all that, they're a little different because they don't own their own charging network. So um, you're gonna have to plan a little bit using Electrify America's app or uh, plug share app or some other type of app. And maybe we'll do a video on just these apps and what I, what I use and what I think is good. So definitely take your car on a trip. Uh, if you're worried, charge to 100% on the, the first leg. So at night, charge to 100%, get to where you're going, and then maybe taper it down to only needing 80%. Uh, these cars are gonna charge their fastest from zero to 80%. Uh, I think the refresh Model S will go from 10 to 80% in 30 minutes. Um, that's the new Model S or Model X, the refresh with the yoke steering wheel. Um, this Genesis here will go 10 to 80% in 18 minutes, or, or even a little less. I've seen it get a little bit less than that, depending if the battery's preconditioned. And that is a, I mean, that, I think that's the fastest charging speeds. There are an 800 volt system in these cars. So I think it's the fastest you can, um, fastest car to purchase right now or one of the fastest okay so traveling is definitely something that you want to do want to try out in these cars they're so much fun um, and it's also about that experience and the experience is not just driving to work at home I mean take this thing out on the road all right so what's next what do you need to worry with let's talk service uh, there's nothing really other than you know possibly if you don't have staggered wheels rotating your tires about every 5,000 miles. Um, yeah, it's just not, there's just really no service, uh, servicing that needs to happen in these cars. Mm -hmm. This car's got 6,500 miles on it now. Uh, 5,000 miles, all I did was just jack it up and rotate the tires because they're not staggered tires. Other, other things to, you know, live with driving um you know if you have a long commute see if your work's got a charging station or if there's one nearby and you feel like you just want to just until you get used to the car maybe a little bit more of a buffer to get home um, there's nothing wrong with that there's no shame in it um, but you know just just kind of be mindful of your distance and where you're driving and what kind of miles you can or range you can put on these cars these cars have and just know that, you know, you, depending on how far out you go for the day, you may need a charge to come home or just get top it off just for a little, little buffer in there. Um, other than that, really living with an EV on a daily basis is no different than living with a gas powered vehicle, um, other than just the charging side of it. Um, these cars are quieter, they're smoother. Uh, my wife drives an um, Lexus RX 350, which I'm hoping to put her into a Mercedes EQE SUV soon, once they come out. And she loves her car. But you know, it's funny. She tells me she loves it, but what does she drive the most? She drives the GV60. Um, I pretty much have to ask her if I can use it for the day because if she's gonna go out for the day, she wants to be in this car. And so I ask her, well, why do you wanna be in this car? 
And she'll say, well, I don't want to put gas in my car. I went, ah, but you don't want to own an electric car. She goes, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm, I'm starting to warm up to the idea. So I'm now trying to convert her. She's already driving it on a daily basis. So she's living with it daily now. And she understands how to plug it up and unplug it and things like that. So it's really um, kind of old hat to her at this point. So that really kind of concludes um, part three and, and, this, the, and, the, and the whole series itself on should you buy an EV. I think you should buy an EV. I think um, that the more people that buy it, the more buy one of these cars, the more charging stations are out. And listen, there are thousands and thousands of these charging stations all over the U.S., you're not, and, and really in any part of the, any part of the world. So you're not going to have a problem traveling, getting, you know, charging the car, driving it on a daily basis or whatever that case may be. So should you buy one? Absolutely. Go out, start looking at them. BMW, Mercedes, Tesla, Genesis, Hyundai, Kia, um, and the, the list goes on and on. Porsche, all of these manufacturers have gotten in the game now, and they're going to produce more and more and more of these. Um, Toyota is, for some reason, lagging. I think they're just trying to hold on to their hybrid systems, uh, but I think eventually you're going to see them make an electric car for every model that they own as well. So until the next video, make it a great day. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, and go test drive an EV. Go buy an EV. I promise you will not be upset with your decision. See you in the next video.